I'm Jürgen. This is a Kawasaki KLR and um, this is the famous Doohickey and we're going to put this into this bike and uh, I'm going to tell you uh, why we're going to put it in and uh, explain how it's done. First of all, after making everything accessible, uh, we take the cover off the solenoid, we disconnect the solenoid um, to make sure we can get to these wires that run to the alternator uh, because you actually don't really have to disconnect them. You can just remove the cover and then move everything here. Next we take the starter gears out. Uh, be very careful because uh, these starter gears have a couple of small washers, small trust washers on them. One sticking here. Uh, it's four of them all together. Each starter gear has got one on each side. While you've got the starter gear and the outer alternator cover in your hands, uh, you can check if your bike is affected by what's normally called uh, the low, uh, the sorry, the deep hole syndrome. Uh, it affects the 2008 and 2009 models. I don't know exactly when it stops. Um, to check if your bike is affected, you take the second starter gear, the one with the big teeth, and you put it into the outer uh, cover, and you try to push the shaft in as far as it goes. If it looks like this, it's fine. If it goes in that deep, uh, then you're going to have to machine a deeper shaft or you have to put something into this hole to prevent it from disengaging on the other side. To get the flywheel off, uh, you're going to have to modify a number 32 spanner so that it can actually fit into the flywheel and ideally you want to uh, give it a shape that you can rest it against the foot peg here and then you can simply take a number 19 socket and a long breaker bar and get the flywheel bolt out and now you take your flywheel puller you grease it nicely You tread it into your flower until it seats against the crankshaft and then I've made this little contraption here uh, to keep the spanner in place so it can't slip off and uh, then we need to pull. Sometimes the flowers come off very quickly and very easily like this one for example. Um, the best one I ever had was actually one uh, where I threaded the puller in and while I was reaching for the big spanner to put it under tension the flywheel came off and it landed on my foot fortunately on my steel cap shoes that's one of the reasons why you should wear safety gear while working in your workshop once you've got the flywheel loose on the crankshaft you have to hold the sprocket of the starter gear and pull only the alternator off the starter clutch then make sure you don't lose the little woodruff key and now you can take the gear off as well we've got access to the lever itself now and we can see already uh, the first problem of the original lever um, this adjustment is wasted already only this little fraction that's left over here is actually still left over for the lever to operate and to put the chain under tension. So uh, basically you're saying it's three quarters through its adjustment yeah, range Yeah, it's basically already. three quarters through its adjustment range already. Um, Can you say what, how much mileage the bike got on? Uh, the bike's got about six and a half thousand kilometers at the moment. So what did that About four thousand miles. It's practically for all intents and uh, purposes. It's like new. A yeah. new, new bike. Yeah. Um, another problem which you can see here is the fit of the lever on the shaft is actually very poor. It's got a lot of play here and this will first of all 
cause a lot of mechanical noise and secondly it will put a lot of uh, vibration or stress onto the spring that actually operates the mechanism, the original spring, which we're going to get to a little bit later. We're now going to replace the lever with the one that Eagle Mike's making. And you can see already, first of all, it fits much nicer onto the shaft. It's got much less play and uh, you've got about two-thirds of your adjustment still left for the lever to operate. Older model KLR before 2007 had different problems with the same mechanism. First of all, the springs after a very short time looked like these. It happened after as little as four or five thousand kilometers. And the second problem was the previous levers, which I've got a few samples here, uh, which just broke into little pieces. Uh, falling into the sump of the engine and obviously also releasing the whole mechanism. Um, and, um, here's a very beautiful example of one which I caught just in time before it failed. Two problems were solved on the 2008 model uh, but not in a very nice way. As we've seen uh, the part doesn't fit very nicely uh, but at least it doesn't break anymore. Uh, the springs also don't break but the springs are actually so long that after very low mileage, after only about 10,000 kilometers, uh, they stop working altogether, uh, which starts uh, causing a lot of wear on your balancer chain and a lot of engine noise and vibration. This is the short one. All the others are the same. This one's shorter than the others. fits in there. Sometimes it helps to get a screwdriver in behind it and make sure you don't pull the idler of the balancer out of here uh, because there's a couple of trust washers in here uh, which uh, you don't really want to fish out of the sump. It's not the end of the world if it happens, but it's easier if you leave everything in place for now. And now we've got the spring here. You can see already after six and a half thousand kilometers, the spring is basically coil bound. It's got no tension left. You can see when, it, when I take it off here, it's basically fitted there without any tension, which means at this point in time, uh, your balancer chain will not get tightened anymore. Uh, and uh, it will start wearing away quickly. Here we've got the original Kawasaki coil spring and uh, the Eagle Mike torsion spring, uh, which we're going to fit now. What would be the reason we fit a torsion spring rather than the coil spring? There is a fundamental difference between the two. Uh, the coil spring uh, as Kawasaki uses it, actually connects to a separate lever of the tensioner mechanism, uh, which means that if you clamp your doohickey with the clamping bolt, uh, you will still have vibration on that spring and you will still have load on that spring because of the uh, tolerances and the play between all the different parts. If you use the torsion spring, uh, the torsion spring uh, engages with the lever itself. So as soon as you clamp the lever, there's absolutely no load on the spring itself anymore. And uh, that just uh, takes away a lot of possibility of the spring to fail. I wouldn't expect this spring to fail at all because of that reason. It basically only has to do work the moment you loosen the bolt when you adjust the mechanism. This is where we're going to drill the hole for the torsion spring. If you're very careful uh, that you don't damage the old gasket, then you actually don't have to put a new one in. 
but uh, it's always better to have one in stock just in case. Um, if you decide to leave the old gasket in place, uh, do not start scratching any of these little leftovers off the sealing surface because then it's not going to seal anymore. And then basically just before you put it back together, you just put a little bit of oil onto the sealing surface and onto this little o-ring that sits on the front of your starter motor. Make sure the locating pins are in place and fit the first cover onto the shaft of the idler mechanism and the starter. Here we go. So the the little lever that the spring was pulling on before, is that now just hanging uh, there? It's just hanging there, it's not needed anymore and uh, it's not going to do any harm, it doesn't have any function anymore uh, but um, it's not worthwhile to remove it or necessary to remove it, you can just leave it in place. The shorter set of bolts with one very short one uh, goes into the first alternator cover. Okay, now we fit the torsion spring into the hole that we drilled earlier. Um, it's a very tight fit, especially if you drill the hole on a drill press. Uh, it's going to be slightly wider if you do it with the hand drill. And you see you actually have to give it a nice push with a pair of pliers to get it in. Next comes our doohickey. And the tricky part now, we have to move, we have to put, uh, use a small pair of pliers and put this end of the spring into this end of the lever. Mm -hmm. It helps a little bit if you put some tension onto the lever, put the clamping bolt in. Just make it hand tight to stop the lever from moving. And now you can grab the spring and pull it over with a small pair of pliers and hook it into the lever and push it back here at the top to make sure that later when we fit the starter gear that the starter gear doesn't collide with the coils of the spring. Now we can loosen the lever again and the whole mechanism is working. To get the flywheel on, you have to align the slot in the flywheel with a key that you fit it in back into the shaft. And uh, as you try to get it on, you actually have to turn the starter gear clockwise to allow it to slip back into its housing. And here we go. It's a taper fit, so once you tighten up that nut, it will be back in its place. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also, uh, Kawasaki tells you to replace the bolt every time you remove the flower. Uh, I don't do it. Uh, I also don't use the full torque that Kawasaki prescribes, because uh, according to my experience and my calculations, the torque of 130 Newton meters is more than enough, and that doesn't do any damage to the bolt either. And um, within the last 10 years, and uh, I don't know how many hundred of KLRs we have done this job, uh, I didn't have a flywheel falling off so far. Make sure that your little washers are in place. Put the gear with the fine teeth in first. Then you, use, uh, then you take the other one. Uh, with the smaller part of the gear facing towards the engine. Put the shaft into the pocket first and then you very very carefully and very slowly turn the starter gear and you try to find the position where this slots in. And as it slots in, do not move it any further because as soon as you turn it further you will put tension onto the shaft, you will bend it slightly sideways and you will have problems to fit the alternator cover. Now you must just make sure that you find where this needs to go. Uh, 
ideally look at where the clamping bolt goes through the housing and as soon as you start fitting you're going to feel the magnet of the flywheel will start pulling very hard and try to pinch your fingers and it always almost goes on by itself you pack away the cables here connect the neutral switch so this is the longer set of bolts now and these are all the same length uh, they go into the outer alternator cover and just like previously on the inner cover uh, these have to be tightened at, uh, with a torque of 10 newton meters